Hello, welcome back to another episode of the Corporate Cowboys podcast. I'm your host, Alex, the intern. And uh, today is the 8th of January, Friday, the 8th of January, 2021. And it started off with, um, started off just being a hot mess. The fucking dumpster fire. So what's that mean for everyone else? Well, it means that um, we have to get acquainted with uh, with just disappointment. I'm not I'm not mad at all about what's going on at the fucking capital, at the at government. Whatever level you're on, whether you're local, regional, at the state or federal, or I guess that'd be then state, then district, then federal, right? Because there's levels on levels to this shit. There's where there is corruption, there is opportunity, and everybody wants to, uh, everybody wants to assert their own little fucking. Everyone wants to assert their own little piece of the action. And and as isolated a bubble as they can is what I'm getting at. So yeah, I wouldn't doubt that there's different sectors, there's different sections, there's different territories to the federal government that we aren't aware about that we're not privy to and um, and yeah corporate you just have to think in a corporate mindset that's always what I bring it back to that's just where my where my one track mind goes to it's always to corporate Pay, pay homage to those that paved the way, i.e. your forefathers, and recognize that what they did was in order to create opportunities, was in order to create different modes, different modes of livelihood, different modes of life. And that's necessarily... Um, That would be business, i.e. corporate bodies, communities, business communities. Essentially the basis for capitalism. Um, oh shit, never mind. This episode... Um, this episode, I don't know, I feel like I'm distracted, but we're going into the weekend here, so I'm kind of taking it easy, so excuse me, you'll have to excuse me if, um, if I seem out of it, I'm, um, getting ready for the weekend, and I have a lot of, uh, work to catch up on for Monday, so... I've just got a lot of things going at the same time. And while I enjoy doing these podcasts because they give me some some time to myself, I also recognize that if I if I'm doing them for myself, then I've gotta be consistent. So I'm showing up. I'm showing up and putting in the work essentially. Folks might be asking, folks might be asking, what's the point of uh, doing something when you don't want to do it? And the point is, is, um, it's training. It's always training. You never want to be not training or not practicing for something. Um... 
if you're ever wasting time or find yourself wasting time, then uh, then you aren't you aren't training for what you could be. Just hold on. Just putting some gloves on. So you've always always got to be in that mindset of training for something, training for something, and that doesn't necessarily mean a physical. It doesn't necessarily mean exercise. I mean, you can treat anything like an exercise, like practice, but um, it's always okay. Nice. Okay. Yeah, but it's always it's always gonna be practice. You gotta, you gotta realize that there are generations before us that never, that didn't even have the time to practice. Nowadays, <clears throat> in the U.S. specifically, there have been entire generations where all they had was time to practice. All they had was time. And they chose to waste it. Essentially, putting off, putting off the potential to grow. Literally, putting off the potential. So they, they never even appreciated the potential they did have in order to make something of it. In order to... To transform that potential into something kinetic into energy um i myself i i did go through that i'm grateful that it wasn't an entire generation or else i'd be lost but looking back and recognizing that I did I did lose out I did lose out on what was supposed to be additional time to get better and it could be in the form of uh, reading even something something technical just reading that's training you're training your mind your mind is also a weapon i suppose it's also a tool that's the whole purpose of this podcast now is to put what i read to put what i research to put what i write into some kind of verbal format and again it might not be word for word but in putting it in a verbal format, I'm able to to appreciate how it sounds when I say it so that I can work on my tone, so I can work on my logic. If there is any issue with its soundness... <laughs> And I can multitask. So multitasking is good also. That's what this podcast is for, essentially. It's to help me help others in the future. It might not help you now. The topics that I review, the topics I go over, though they're timeless, maybe uh, you don't have enough context, and that'll require me to dig a little deeper and become a better storyteller in building 
context around my argument and providing those additional premises that will serve as bridges of consciousness to have folks, you know, really consider, contemplate, contemplate, and understand my position and recognize that there's no going back once you're in. I know I've mentioned once or thrice on this podcast that my goal is to become so fluent in logic that I'm able to create the argument and essentially walk people in to the argument and have them recognize that there's no walking out. That if I'm advocating for the truth, and I mean, let's be real, I won't, I won't always, I won't always be right. I won't always be right. I will believe that I'm right, but I can be convinced otherwise. I can be persuaded. I can't be, I can't be uh, forced, obviously. I can't be coerced, but I can be convinced. I can be persuaded with additional logic and additional reason. If I don't have the capacity with which to argue or, or defend myself, then I, I'm able to recognize that my position might not be as strong. My logic might have some holes in it, might not be as complete. And that would enable me to, to consider a, an alternative point of view, an alternate perspective. <laughs> But at the end of the day, G L D T. At the uh, at the end of the day, we all at the end of the day, we want to be as good. We want to live up to our reputation as being good people. And I know humans don't don't have that but we have to recognize that ultimately we want what's good for us And we should. We should want what is good. We should want to recreate it, reproduce it. And um, hopefully able to universalize it. To universalize it, to make it universal. Because we don't want to universalize the most, the, the worst parts of humanity. I mean... The only reason we're bringing the street code back to corporate, I guess, is because corporate forgot. Corporate really, corporations really believe that um, that there aren't consequences. As corporate cowboys, we want to reintroduce consequences to decisions. And yeah, granted, they're not individual decisions. They are decisions made behind closed doors and they affect they affect numerous people not just not just the CEO but employees the public and in my personal opinion being public companies corporations are um not indebted Corporations are really just trustees, the trustees of society. So they're to carry out because they're chartered and incorporated under uh, national law, under the laws of a nation. They should be under the care of the whole nation.
under the under the home. They should be under the care under the home nation. I was talking into something else. <laughs> But there are instances where corporations corporations believe themselves to be um, above the law, above the very law that they incorporated under, and that just gets fucking messy for many people. What the fuck? What is this? Now, it's up to, it, it's really up to the future. Um, I know folks would like to think that we're working, that we're working for the future, but we need the future now. And corporate is the future. In order to work in it, you've got to be a corporate cowboy. You've got to be willing, you've got to be willing to get your hands dirty and and join join the uh join in the game you have to you have to play to win essentially again i'm not holding anything against those who have families those who have commitments outside but this is just how I view corporate is it's that you're you're going into you're going into conflict. You're choosing you're choosing this life. You're choosing this game. When you get a job, when you apply for work, you, you apply for you apply to play. Essentially, you apply to be considered. All I would like people to recognize is that they're players in the game, that they're players in a team. They're not individual players. So they're not just working for themselves. I'm not just working for myself. I said at the very beginning, I believe, the very first episode, and I've reminded people, reminded people, reminded, and I've reminded myself with many episodes since and many episodes since that I'm doing this to improve myself and how I work. With the ultimate goal being, with the ultimate goal being helping others. So, in order to do that, I have to, I have to become aware of what my argument sounds like, of what my voice sounds like first, and then work on it from there. Yeah, sorry if I seem distracted. Uh, it's a it's a lazy Friday here, and just kicking back and relaxing. My pocket knife. Sorry. I'm just looking forward to the future is all. Whatever it might hold. I'm just here to do God's work, I suppose. <laughs> I really... I've seen some miracles. I forget who I told this. Oh, I remember who I told this to. I've seen some miracles. And I've seen some atrocities. And all you can do is prepare. All you can do is... Is... Is exercise and get ready and I don't mean I don't mean prepare like you know stack food and stack lead and stack metals and 
you know, st and stack them deep. It's nice. That's definitely nice. That's that's preparedness in one sense. Uh, in another sense, you have to know how to use all of that. If you're gonna have a, a cache of non-perishables, you gotta know how to fucking prepare them when it comes time to to crack that seal. <laughs> you gotta know how to fucking cook. You have to know how to clean. You have to know how to how to maintain um, your equipment. That's like complete preparedness. So while I might not, I might not have, whoops, I might not have anything deep. I mean, I work from, for the sake of this podcast, from check to check. I know what to do with my money. Whenever I see it roll in, I know exactly where it's going. Budgeted, mentally, or on paper, I know what it's doing for me. Because I, I know what I do for it. I have to be able to take what I do and wish it to be universal. I mean, that's how you know. Items. What is it? That's how you know a task is one of, of, of honor. If it's something that you wish to see others do, I mean, that's a pretty honorable it's a pretty honorable task. And preparedness is one of them. There's... What's the term? Honor in, in preparing. There's a, there's a sense of dignity that's restored or fortified in preparing. So... There's nothing wrong with preparing. You you can I guess you can over prepare in some areas and be under prepared in some. Sometimes you won't know which is which until it comes time when you have to put that into practice. But the goal is to is to do right by yourself, do right by those that you seek to associate with, be a, a good associate, is to do what you want, is to do what you see to be universalized. I forget who, um, being a sociology major, I forget who, who brought that up. Was it Kant? Immanuel Kant? I forget now. But when I first heard it, it made complete sense. I mean, it's it's literally the the dictum not the dictum, the uh parable, not the fucking parable. It's just the quote, the quote like do unto others what you want to have done to you. But universalized where everybody should be operating in a way that they want everyone else to be operating. And it makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. Because if we were to characterize... If we were to characterize... If we were to characterize some of the um, actions that we see in corporate... Uh, we would question... We would question people's sanity. We would question uh, their morality. We would have questions for whether or not they cared to live <clears throat> because of, of, of universalizing, right? So whatever was done in the boardroom or I guess in the market in well-established and young burgeoning markets, whether that's something they'd like to see done onto them. 
And gr granted, business is war. And I've I've been in it before. Do I want to be on the receiving end? It all depends. It all depends. I mean, I know I've got something coming to me. It's just it's just karma. You might say, damn, Alex, you're a fucking square. You believe in karma. And in a sense, I do. I definitely do. Only because um, the human mind, the human mind, the human brain is such a fucking unique thing where you might be desensitized to the shit now, but there will come a day and I don't, I don't question this because I've seen it in others. I do not question it that it may or, or may not happen. I mean, maybe I'll go to the grave not having experienced what I've inflicted on others. But I don't for a moment doubt that it's possible the day comes when I hesitate. <clears throat> when I... <laughs> when I fucking choke. I don't doubt it. It's a part of life. It's a part of life to fucking croak. Everybody does it. Tell me somebody... <laughs> oh, I was going to say something funny and stupid. Tell me someone... Tell me someone... Show me someone alive today who's... Who's been dead and lived to tell the tale. Yes, I've seen the videos online of... Of the people who... Um, who've died and gone to hell or... Died and seen heaven and... You know, what the after... Not the afterlife... But the afterthought looks like they were never really in the afterlife, in my opinion. Otherwise, they would have never came back. They were given second chances and all this BS for a reason. I don't know. Go ask them what they're doing with their second chance, right? Me, I know what I'm fucking doing. And it's being a corporate cowboy. Before I decided to be a corporate cowboy, I was a corporate drone. I was a corporate drone. And... Um, I mean, early on, I had issues with authority. So, you know, maybe I already had markings of a fucking cowboy then. I had markings of a... Yeah, I had markings of a cowboy then. But I did what I could to fit in. And in doing so, I fell in with the... Um, well, not with the wrong crowd. But with the most effective one, the one that was most appealing, the cool crowd. And in my young mind, I'm sure I thought that they were cool, even though what they were doing was, by all accounts, dangerous and and or unethical, non unconventional, uh, unorthodox, some would say unlawful. But that didn't care. That didn't matter to me then because I I wanted to be in. I, I wanted to be in that. I wanted to be a part of that. I saw that as. I saw that as beneficial to my life. I saw that as providing benefit to my life. Where I don't think I. I, I don't. Looking back, I don't. I don't think I needed it. But uh, having been in. Having been accepted and then having exited it, I can see now where where I need to improve in my life. I'm able to reflect and I'm able to recapacitate and find what I need to be doing in order to be better, be a better um, corporate agent be a better corporate cowboy because that's the goal is to always be better <clears throat> and I'm not the first corporate cowboy I'm definitely not the last there are plenty of corporate cowboys shall we say who just choose not to be recognized 
who maybe uh, don't need the attention, don't need the outright affiliation. Because, I mean, let's face it, corporate cowboys have a fucking target on their back. So they don't need a certificate. <laughs> they don't need a fucking certificate that says they're a corporate cowboy. They just are. They act. They move. They do. They universalize the principles, the principles of capitalism, and they move the assets of corporate, the real assets, not the fucking monetary ones. <laughs> um, but again, there's there's corporate cowboys at, at every level of corporate. From entry level to executive, HR, and custodian. Everywhere. Everywhere. For corporate cowboys, um, yeah, I mean, making a living has become a way of life. Literally. If you're working from check to check, making your living... You live around work. You live around getting that check. Whether or not you like the work, it's just work. You have to love it. You have to enjoy it. You have to appreciate it. You have to appreciate what work means to you. It's the ability to put food on your table. It's the ability to provide for yourself. To provide... For a family, if you have one. And few people see that. Some people, I don't know, might be born into the life. Not born into corporate. We're all born into corporate, but born into a circumstance where... Um, where work doesn't mean a lot to them. Maybe they were born into wealth or just born into a family that had different principles surrounding work. Um, and I guess really you only get that from rich families. If, if you come from a family that views work as being for the poor, I mean, if... <laughs> If you don't work at all, I I could give a shit, again, what your monetary assets are. You, you gotta recognize where the work comes from. If you have to pawn off, literally pawn off your money to get shit done, you're worthless. You're worthless if you can't do it yourself. I'm not disparaging Americans with disabilities. But it's the cold, hard fucking truth that if you can't, huh, that if you can't work, uh, you can't eat. That's just the way of life. Closed mouths don't get fed. Closed, closed hands don't get bread. That's some corporate cowboy shit. Today's sponsor, um, because again, the podcast doesn't have any corporate sponsors until now, up until, until now, there are no corporate sponsors, it's uh, just myself, and um, whatever I feel like, uh, like plugging, if you want to get on this train, you can send us a message or a DM on Instagram at incorporating dot associates underscore IA. You could um, send us a mail, write to us, uh, send us a product to review if you want, or send us a product to keep if you believe we'll use it. 
in the conference room or outside of it. Uh, you can send us questionable items. Don't send us anything quote unquote illegal. And I'll be sure to thank you if you include a little message. Maybe you have a moniker you want to go by or or I'll just say thank you when I when I get it. And I could work on again my my verbal skill on how to talk around it, make it vague. Because again, I'm not gonna talk about everything in my life. I'm just gonna talk as I would to corporate. And corporate's got really great public relations, uh, similar to that of a diplomat, where we can say something and mean something and be talking about com something completely different. So I have to be able to use those skills also if I'm gonna be in corporate. Today's sponsors, sponsors, today's sponsor is um, the pickaxe, the pickaxe. Um, why? Because, well, I mean, it's just, I, I think it's, uh, it falls in line with the theme of this particular episode, which is just to do work, to do work. And you can start with literally any kind of work. Because you won't know, you won't know the impact you're having until you take a step back and assess it. So there's that. Um, a pickaxe, you want to get a small one, maybe um, two and a half, five pound head. And a pickaxe, for those who don't know, are essentially what you see um, in those old, old ass photos of of railroad workers who are uh, digging up dirt to lay down track, and then later drive uh, drive spikes into those tracks or drive spikes to hold those tracks down to the road so that the train can go over. But the pickaxe is what first is what is what first what is it? Is what first levels the earth to get shit done. That's like the first piece of work. And very few people are willing to volunteer to pick up that pickaxe. That's why slaves were required. Immigrants were required. Um, and then just wage slaves, wage slaves who have no, who have no means, who have no other recourse, who have no other alternative, no other options available to them. Few will voluntarily take up a pickaxe or a shovel and put that work in, put that sweet, sweet work in. But when you're a corporate cowboy, you have to know what it feels like to get your hands dirty. You have to know what it feels like to use a pickaxe, to use a shovel, just as well as a pen pencil, a stapler. And I'm not judging. I'm not judging those who've never had to work a lick outside of the office. But for those who have had to work and lick outside of the office, <laughs> um, those, are, those are ones who are familiar with a different form of struggle. A different variety, if you will. Dang it. So, I'm not at all 
um, denigrating or discounting the efforts or the struggles of folks who haven't had to um, work outside of the office. If all you know is office work, then what you do best is inside of the office. That's that's cool. If you should ever choose to expand your knowledge outside of office work, I would commend you. I would commend you because any amount of or any increase in skill even outside of office work is commendable because it's something you can use later on without having to outsource it or ask for outside help. You won't owe anybody any favors (laughs) for doing so. Sorry. So what I worry about most is whether or not what I'm doing is right. But I don't have to worry about it because so long as I believe, so long as I believe it, so long as I believe it, I know I'm not wrong. But again, I said, your boy can be convinced, your boy can be persuaded. Um, As far as compelled, it's got to be really fucking compelling. But forced or coerced, likely not. Fooled or tricked, I mean, that's along the lines of convincing and persuasion. It just has to be right. It has to be, it has to be right. It has to be for good. Because if you force or coerce or trick someone into uh, doing wrong, sooner or later, I mean, that's just, that's karma. That's karma. That's karma, and it's coming back, without a doubt. Without a doubt, I've seen it come back. Never, uh, never lives long. If... If the goal is to die fast, I guess, to die quickly, then it might be a good idea. I mean, you could lie on your way out, right? Like, what would you fucking care? That's water. What would you fucking care? You can die, go out with a lie. Me, I wanna go out with a bang. I mean, why lie? What's the fucking point? I mean, you have to be really just a a poor individual. Like, do you wanna go out as poor or do you wanna go out rich? And again, not material. That shit doesn't matter. It's what you know how to do. It's what you've been doing. It's what you leave behind. That shit's rich. If you left a pile of cash behind, with or without a name, you, you're leaving it behind to people with names. And what? Like, your, your word now counts for something? Son, come on. Or daughter, come on. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, that first half of the podcast was likely very slow. Like I said, it's a lazy Friday. I'm just taking it easy at the pad. Uh, here, heading into the weekend. Just wrapping up. Winding down. And then uh, the weekend. We'll likely get into some business. If not, um, we'll likely get into some fun. Which is still business. I mean, I have the most fun when I'm, you know, handling business. 
I have I have to stop saying, you know, I have to stop saying, um, I have to stop saying like, I have to stop saying, you know what I mean, you know what I'm saying, do you feel me? I know I don't use a lot of those, but I have to stop using them even with people that I do use them. Or even with people that do use them, because they do rub off, they do rub off, it doesn't sound as professional. And again, I'm just going through this line of thinking so I could wrap my mind around that objective to not use them. Because using them puts on an air of undeserving. It's not an air of unprofessionalism. I've met some professional ass thugs, gangsters, hoodlums, but professionals. And they are... They didn't all speak like that, but the majority of them spoke like that. And that's not a lack of education, not at all. Because when they say, you know what I'm saying, you know exactly what they're saying. They're just confirming it because they don't want to lose you. That's how professional they are. It's considerate. It's consideration. They are considerate for your, <laughs> they're considerate for your well-being. They must know the reputation. They must know what the fuck they are. They must know that they're a criminal, they must know that they're a thug, they must know what they're doing, right or wrong. They just don't want to lose you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, that was perfect. I walked your ass into that one and I dropped it right on you. God damn, that's pretty funny. But again, right or wrong, you have to own it. You have to own it. Because if you lie about it, what, you think your lies are going to live after you're gone? Nah, your lies are just going to get dug up with you. That's not hard, especially when you know how to use a pick, axe, and a shovel. <laughs> That's hilarious. It's hilarious how it all comes together like that. So as for me, I mean, I see folks on social media who are um, going crazy. Because of what's happening now with the world, not just the U.S. But me, I, I don't lose faith. I don't lose faith. I know whether you want to say, you know, it's like a faith in God or whatever. Like, I guess I, I could care less what religion you're a part of. God, to me, is one thing. And it's natural law. That's how I choose to view it as. It's... A natural law, not the law of nature, not the law of nature, not not survival of the biggest, survival of the strongest, though even in humans that does exist, there are those that abide by the law of nature. It's natural law to me. And yeah, it sounds a little softer. It sounds a little... I'm going to say softer, yeah. I'm going to go with softer because... Uh, that falls right in line with soft sciences and all that. But even in sociology, uh, there is some agreement among young scholars and young academics that natural law, as it was first conceived, is the most just and is likely the only... Um, well, this is just my opinion. Likely the only exercise, the only theory of law that is equitable, where there's equity in it. Every other man-made law, from fucking civil to human rights, uh, it's not equitable. It's not. It's just, they're just words. They're just lip service. And we've seen them, like we've seen them in, in practice, we've seen them on display, we've seen them in action, how they're carried out by the very people who, who claim they legislated them, legislated them, legislated them, who claim they legis who claim they legislated them, legislated, who claim they legislated them for honorable damn now I lost my train of thought who legislated them for good causes for honorable causes right 
for redeemable causes. <laughs> maybe not even redeemable. Maybe they don't believe that. Okay, that's maybe a little too much. Redeemable, redeeming. For social causes. And that's all it is. They're just social causes because they can move people. They can move parts of society. They can move parts of... so. They can move a social base into action. Whether it was to cause them to go vote, cause them to go riot, cause them to call their congressmen. If you can politicize something, you can socialize it. That's about it. But the work... The work... I mean, shit, I wish they would socialize that. But work means effort. Work means discomfort. Work means pain. And few people take that shit up voluntarily. So you think they're really going to socialize it? No. I mean, the folks who legislate it probably feel like it's a chore to legislate. That's probably a pain to fucking legislate to them. You think they want to work more? <laughs> come on, bro. Fucking come on. Daughter. Son. Sis. Come on. <laughs> In the time that you've known me, and I hope we get to know each other a little better, you should know that work can be as addictive as drugs and i've i've been addicted to drugs i think i want to say just the experience maybe not uh physically but definitely mentally just the experience of the escape and this goes back to this to the time that i wasted before just caught up in bullshit going down um unimportant rabbit holes on youtube when, I mean, there are some good rabbit holes to go down to. And me, I'm just pursuing garbage. Music videos, just for the hell of it. I get it if you're investigating or, yeah, if you're, if you're researching music videos on how they're made or the symbolism behind them, subliminal messages or, or the choreography, like the evolution of dance. Okay, I get it. Maybe you want like a temporal study. A longitudinal study about them but there are instances where i i haven't been as honest with myself regarding my work effort regarding the work ethic i'm supposed to keep the work ethic i know i have and yeah people say people like to justify to themselves or to others that we need a mental break do you need a, a break from work in order to enjoy life? You got to step away and uh, take a walk and just smell the roses every now and then. And that's nice. That's, geez, what's the, uh, what's the word? Is that honorable? No, that's nice. That's, <sighs> it's, it escapes me. respectable no not honorable respectable that's it'll come to me later on probably tonight and then i'll snap awake and punch my pillow and dry fire my piece like three or four times but i'll probably get it and i'll get over it That's not an, it's not endearing. What is it? See, I, and then I lost my original train of thought too because I, I just spiral mentally on occasions like this. But, you know, it's good that it's on a Friday and I'm just BSing. I'm just doing this mental exercise. This huge exercise. This, <laughs> this huge psychological operation that is the Corporate Cowboys podcast. And it's my operation. I mean, as far as you know, it's my operation. My name is Alex. I'm the intern. My associates 
my associates didn't want to be known. But just know that we're in corporate. We're, we're already there. We're already there. So they might go by Alex. They might go by Tyler. Robert. Carlos. Muhammad. They might already be there. And they're corporate cowboys. They were brought up in similar circumstances to yours or in better or worse off from how you were. Does it make them any better? Does it make them any worse? It only makes them good or bad depending on how they work. Depending on how they work. And again, you got to identify with the people who work, essentially. If, if, if you find yourself more and more falling into uh, the crowd that finds a way around work or finds a way not to work, whether it be pawning off the work or delegating it to somebody else, just recognize that that's less work that has your name on it. Somebody else has that claim to your work. You have to be protective over your work, over your reputation, over your rep. Not so much over, I, I mean, not so much over like your ideas. You can share your ideas freely. Obviously, be careful, be cautious with who you share your ideas with also because they can just take your ideas and put you out of commission for them. But as far as work goes, you want to identify with people who aren't afraid to work. Better yet, find people who love to work, who love it. There are those that are like indifferent and will just do it because it's there and it must be done. But then there are those who, who really love it, who love it, who embrace it, who say, damn, I gotta, I, not I have to dig another hole with this pick and shovel, but I get to dig another hole with this pick and shovel. <laughs> and again, those are few and far in between. Now and when the railroad was being constructed, few and far in between. The goal is to become that person, is to become someone who's not only not afraid of the work, but enjoys it really wants to get their hands on and dirty. Well, I mean, maybe not get their hands dirty, but that depends on the context, right? It depends on how we're using that. As long as we're talking about getting our hands dirty, might I suggest wearing gloves? <laughs> This is me bullshitting. I know I have a couple minutes left before I have to wrap it up. But might I suggest gloves and possibly a mask because you could get your hands dirty and your soul also. I mean, like the soul of your face. Your face. You could get your face dirty. You could dirty your face. You could solely your face's reputation. <laughs> if you're captured by somebody's uh, camera system, somebody's, by a camera system, any camera system, or somebody's optical recording system, if somebody fucking sees you and pegs you with their fucking eyeball and it's got you in their brain, there's very limited ways to recover that. So, yeah, wear a mask. Otherwise, you're going to be wearing gloves. <laughs> I'm just bullshitting right now. If y'all made it to the end of this one, maybe had a little laugh or two, or 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 you grimaced, winced a little bit, like damn, took a sharp turn, escalated quickly. But that's what work is. Work is work is unpredictable. <laughs> 
work is unpredictable. What was I saying? I lost my train of thought. The goal of work is to be comfortable with it, to not be afraid of it. Damn, I know I'm forgetting a point, and I saw the point, and then I fucking forgot it. I have some work to do outside, um, visit the shop. But if you made it to the end of this one, just recognize that work is nothing to be afraid of. You should want to work. Um, stop saying, um, if you are younger and don't know what to do and you're contemplating taking on some debt in order to go to college, don't do it. Don't do it if you don't know what you want to do. Uh, this might be a recurring theme because again, I'm, I'm making this in order to ship in order to ship back to the past. And help my younger self. So if my younger self ever fucking finds this. If they ever think of the word corporate cowboys. And choose to look it up. I hope it shows up for them. But if you're contemplating what to do after high school. You don't know where you're headed. You're just chilling. You're just floating contemplating higher education because they said it's the next logical step and by then I hope I've by then I hope I've had a, a hand in reforming education so young motherfuckers don't have the difficulties that previous generations have had don't go because then you'll be taking on just debt unnecessarily and you'll be pinning it on your family, whether you know it or not. Not just, you know, not just on your co-signer, but on yourself, on your last name. That's your family. <laughs> you'll be pinning it on yourself. Um, wait until you're a little older. And in the meantime, literally, in the meantime, just get a job. Just get a job, minimum wage. Or get a, get a small hustle on the side. Just a side job doing literally manual labor go out uh, a few times literally try out for for um, outside work try out for landscaping try out for construction try out for homework because it'll it'll expose you to a different reality, a, another perspective. If you want to go corporate immediately, mm, your options are limited after high school. I might start. Um, I might start in service, obviously. So either um, retail or food, and I've done both, and it really opens your eyes to how how um marxism won't work to how to how socialism does not work and why capitalism is the only solution capitalism is the basis for reality it's the basis of business capitalizing that's it there's no there's no socializing good ideas. You capitalize on good ideas. You can't fucking socialize them. Why? Because they're individual ideas. Good luck. Good luck tearing a good idea away from somebody. You'll literally have to kill them for it. Literally. And um, few people are even willing to do that. Why? Because after that, you have to go back to the pick and the shovel. <laughs> Fuck. Fuck. <laughs>